Hello and welcome to the TTS podcast. I am your host, Te Emo Girl. And I am your co-host, James Bond, sixty-nine twenty-six. Your editor at large, known issues. The other guy, phenomenon. And our special guest, Mr. Scuber, who has a very oh. sexy picture. Yeah, I I was actually wanting the one that phenomenon put in. But you know. Oh, the one uh, phenomenon put in. Hang on, hang on. Let me get that. Let me get that. Uh, I believe that's this one. That's the right one, isn't it's it? It's a catch one. No. <laughs> no, not that one. Oh, hang on, hang on. Uh, this one. Oh, there we God. go. There we go. That's the right one. One would. No, it isn't. But all right. That one. Hello and welcome, listeners. Many listeners. Welcome to the show. Oh, I Great gotcha. deal plan for you. Not really. We have a little bit of an echo. I, I, I think um, so far all Jess has planned is um, putting up scanty clad anime chip. Oh, I found it. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that little mistake. It was a complete accident, honest. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, anchored by coverage of the recent um, update of uh, Terraria. Yeah, take it, coming take out it here, Jess. Come on now. two days, Terraria 1.2 comes out October 1st. Oh, so uh, it's a big update. We'll talk a bit more about that in a bit. We're going to talk about a few other games first here and there. And we're also going to be giving away some Terraria codes if we get enough people in. Fingers crossed, since we actually have the... So grab your bot. friends, and while that will reduce your possibility of getting it, because there will be more than one of you, or two, or three, um, it will increase then your possibility your of winning it, them, because otherwise we can't give it away if there's only one of you, or two of you, or three of you. Yeah, so without enough friends, users. Tell them to log in. Once they win, go beat the code out of them, and then you win. And uh, also, it's going to be completely random chosen by the bot, so you may win two codes, so you can then give the second one away to a friend. It's like entering a raffle where there's only like a, a handful of participants. I mean, your it, 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 your odds are great. Now, granted, we're not giving out you know several million dollars, but hell, a free game. There's nothing it's wrong Terraria, there. It's Terraria. It's worth more than several million. I'm just saying. Oh, oh and another thing, uh, there is a way in which people um, uh, kind of like, I, I think they have bots that surf the channels and look for free uh, giveaways, and then they they show up. So if we repeat the word free Terraria, is it possible? And, and then again, are these the kind of people that we wish to cultivate? Now, we, we're, we have an exclusive audience, let's face it. Exclusive in the sense of there's almost... But there's, there's almost no one in it. <laughs> yeah, that's I was about true. To say that. But, uh, Exclusive audience to the Invisible Man. Yeah, we're 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 choosy. No, it's uh, not a man. It's James's mother. Oh, we are bad. both unchosen and choosy at the same time. So, um, if you are listening, consider yourself uh, among the few, the proud, the elite. In any case, um, um, take it. Take it, Jess. Well, what has everyone been playing? I've been mm -hmm. playing... What have I been playing? I've played a bit of Terraria, as always. Um, a bit more of Hitman. Great game. And... Well, uh, I, you couldn't really call it a game, but... Yes, I've been looking after my hatches. So, I was on iOS, I was looking at the top-rated apps, and... There was a retro style Tamagotchi app called Hatchy, or uh, iHatchy, I believe it is. And I've actually got a few little pets that I've hatched out of eggs. They're so cute! Um, other than that, mm, I haven't been playing that much this week. I played a tiny bit of the tutorial of, um, what is it, Company of Heroes earlier. And we're probably going to be doing a live stream of that after the podcast, so. If you like real-time strategy shiz, then join us for that. And you want to watch three people be really bad at it? And one be mildly competent? Then uh, tune in. Pushing it, but yeah. Um, 
I'm a, a big fan of uh, COH, not the recent one, not COH2, but the, the original. But it's not hard. That's not a very controversial position. It's one of the, the great RTSs of all time. People say it's one of the most, one of the best balances. The original, you know, uh, the original two factions of the Americans versus the uh, Wehrmacht, and uh, you know, it's a nice tactical game. It still looks good after shit. How many years now? It came out in eight years ago. Something crazy like that. But anyway, it's a good game. Um, what have I been playing? I just got back from a little bit of a board game night and played Pandemic, and it was it just it's so well keyed to be like always have you on the edge of your seat. You know, Pandemic is a, bo a cooperative board game where you play against the deck, and as the cards come out certain factors get ramped up and so forth. The basic conceit is that you're fighting a, uh, global diseases that are um, where, where there are outbreaks throughout the world and um, basically each cube represents one permutation of this, uh, in this uh, given insidious disease. If you get three on a city and then and that city gets hit again, then it uh, fans out to all adjoining cities. So now each of the surrounding cities gets a cube. That's called an outbreak. If you get more than eight outbreaks, you lose the game. If you run out of certain cards, you lose the game. I won't try to explain all the mechanics, but um, it is, uh, it's really good. I mean, it, it really has this way of always making you a little bit freaked out and rushing around and, uh, and, uh, you know, we lost by one turn. Uh, in fact, we were going to lose two different ways on the f uh, on the following turn, and then we got the wrong card, and boom, we just we lost. But it came that close, and it's just great that it's keyed that way, um, that it's keyed so tightly, um, and it's just fun. Uh, different. Th this group was pretty savvy, the pretty clever gamers, so they were really helping out. It does fall into the tendency of some cooperative board games sometimes where one person kind of takes over or one, you know, the most valuable person just tells everyone what to do and they may as well be playing solitaire and people are just sort of abiding, you know, carrying out their bidding. That can be an unfortunate thing. But this was a good instance where people were coming up with different ideas and we were collectively <coughs> working out solutions um, and it was good. Um, we also played Munchkins, which is a silly, long-winded, complicated, but too silly to take too seriously, fun, I don't know, smashy-bashy, kind of set in a D&D &D kind of world, card-based game. Um, I don't have much to say about it. It's silly good times, I think. Um, speaking of board games. I also played a round of um, Oh, Settlers of Catan on the iPad with my lovely wife preparing her for the potential uh, that we were going to play that tonight, which we didn't do, but um, it was fun! Oh, Just fun! Like what is that that as, as, as a surprise game? <laughs> oh, what? So what is that game? Settlers of Catan is um, is is kind of a gateway game, it's, uh, a gateway to um, uh, sophisticated or I don't know how, what you, what do you say Mo modern board games you know ones with interesting themes and that are more involved than you know Monopoly or Risk or so. Mm. Um, it's a it's kind of the gateway one. I mean, in other words, you'll you'll, you'll find it in Borders. Uh, the bookstore, or uh, it's the first one that people get, it seems to me. And um, it, it's a game where, it's a very, very good game. You, you place a bunch of tiles, hex-shaped hex tiles around uh, that and contain certain resources, and then you lay uh, claim to them by uh, putting up settlements, settlements that can only be built by adjoining roads. You have to have a minimum of two roads, and the roads go along the seams. Again, I won't tell you, I won't try to explain the whole thing, but the basic, it's basically territory acquisition, uh, which gets you to certain, uh, to, to, which gets you 
each settlement gives you a victory point. So you, if you if you acquire uh. the most settlements and then you collect the most resources, then you have more power to build more roads. If you have the strongest road, that gives you a bonus. There's other bonuses, uh, but basically, you, you know, it's basically building up the biggest empire, the fastest, and um, but then with really interesting alter alternative routes to that. Um, and then what you and you can trade resources. So in other words, if I need three, four of these resources to build a settlement, and I'm short one, but I've got excess in another place, I'll say, look, I'll give you two coal for for one lousy wood, and I might get a somebody to to accept that uh, that trade, and then I can build my uh, re, my, my um, uh, settlement and so forth. Um, and the iPad. Uh, adaptation of the game, I have to say, is just a really lovely adaptation. It's just really good. I mean, the AI isn't great. You beat it every time once you know how to play pretty well. Pretty well. Um, but uh, I don't know. Even the music I like. It's just it's just pleasant. It's just a it's just works. Um, it's just fun to play. It's fun to just beat the computer <laughs> at that game. And the and the computer. It's amazing that it works at all because it's it's such a human game because it's all about there's a lot of trading, and you know judgment calls like that. Mm. Um, so the rules are soft in that sense, but mm. even then the, the the game manages to simulate that a little bit. So those are a few things that I've been playing. Nothing pr particularly new. All more or less recommended. Um, I don't know. So, uh, Venomenon, uh, Legend of Grimrock. Legend of Grimrock, it's a indie RPG style, mostly after, like, the old, old older, more hardcore RPGs. Um, yeah, it's very, it's very puzzly. And the it's oldest the puzzle, of the old, the it's also modeled on the old, 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 not to interrupt, but one thing, it, it, it looks... It even looks visually a little like the oldest of the old 3D dungeon crawler computer yeah. games, like the very first ones that you ever saw, which is like yeah. four lines equals a box equals the next room that you, you're moving yeah. forward, you know. It's so. a modern version of that with yeah. really good puzzles and the combat is fairly intuitive. It's a good game overall. Uh, if you like dungeon crawlers, it's definitely worth checking out. Did you happen to pick that up in a humble bundle, for chance? Most likely, yeah. I think I did. Yes. I don't know. Humble bundles are very awesome. You pick up a lot of neat games in there. Like yeah, we talked about them last week. Right now, there's Starkman, Time Surf, Punch Quest. Balloons, TD5, Raven Sword, Shadowlands, and Carmageddon. Carmageddon. <laughs> this is a humble mo mobile bundle. So these games are all for your Android and probably iOS, I assume. And Tropico, and, and then there's Weekly Sale. There's Tropico. It's Tropico 3 and 4, Sign Mora, Skydrift, Anna, and Jagged Alliance. So, well, I haven't really How many much. hours you got into Grimrock, uh, Phenomenon? Uh, First guess, then tell us what Steam tells you. Uh, I think... Thirteen? Fifteen. Is that your guess or that's hours. the fact? That, so you that's guess. the guess. That's the fact. Oh. I Fine, guess don't guess. I don't care. <laughs> Next. I guess thirteen. Dunce. Don't play the game. Don't play the game then. Yeah, it's, I'm going to rage it's, quit it's this bad. podcast. What do you think of that? <laughs> do it. <laughs> Wait, I'll send it to you. I'm in. Mean, ah. Um, Mr. Scoober, what have you been playing? And and and, and I would oh, be sorry. playing uh, Crus Stronghold Crusader if uh, certain known issues would join me ever. Yeah, that's um, right. I just stab at you and what, 
Hey, listen. It would help if I could understand you. What do you want to play me? Stronghold. Yeah, Stronghold. Yeah, I'll play. I mean, we. the truth be told, and by the way, thank you for buying that game for me. <laughs> the truth be told, we have tried to play that game on several occasions, and we have like six different versions of them, and, and then the, the first one doesn't work, so then we try to play the second one, and then, then that doesn't work, and then we're yes. settling for the worst of the bunch, and then that kind of works. And then, and then oh, it's just, on, I it have no idea worse. what's going this on, and you're silently dragons. building a base, and I just don't... I'm not, I'm not, you know, complaining. I'm just saying, um, yeah, you know, you it hasn't quite worked so well. You know, the only one with the 19, well, I guess uh, Stronghold 2 has actual settings. We've tried valiantly, don't get me wrong. And then I need a little uh, tutelage. I need uh, to be taught how to play. I just don't know how basically to play. the way you, you play, gotta play it to be taught <laughs> oh, uh, to play it you yeah. very simply strip naked and shit on your keyboard then you win hmm oh, if you're dead, Sounds, that works. I, well then I <laughs> then I pretty much win that game every day <laughs> you right. shit that often um, you should see a doctor yeah, well. um <laughs> Mr. Scoover what are you been playing um, I've been playing a multitude of games on Android, um, namely Ingress, if you haven't heard of that. It's a, it uses a Google Maps thing to keep track of where you are, and people set up portals at sort of um, landmark locations, if you will, like random places. And uh, you can basically uh, collect... A resource called XM, um, hack the portals to get items like resonators, uh, power cubes, portal keys, namely. Um, portal keys are really awesome in the fact that, say, I'm in uh, Texas and I have a portal key for one in Washington, I can access that portal and do stuff to, to it while not being near it. Um, uh, it's two factions isn't it and when you join you choose your faction and you're basically having a war with other people other real people and uh, to actually um, unless you've got one of these access keys you have to be within a certain range of the portal point which is generally is it a case of the users find a place of interest in the city take a picture of it or uh, take the location of it, send it to Google, and they say whether or not it gets to be one? Or can just anyone set up a portal anywhere? Um, I think anyone can set up portals. Um, like, you can set up portals, it just, you have to get them checked. Uh, like, like, you take a picture of where you want your portal to be, and you basically send it into a uh, board for review, and people are like, "Oh, this is a good idea." And then they say, "Okay, you can have that portal there." Um, it's I, the, right now. Um, the only portals in my town are downtown, and they were um, <laughs> green portals, being that they're enlightened. Uh, that's one faction, and then the other faction is Resistance. What I like about that game a lot is the factor of some, uh, one of your portal gets attacked, and if it's like really close by, you'll like grab your phone, go out there with your tablet, whatever you're playing Ingress on, and you'll start taking it back. Then you notice that someone is actually still a attacking it, and You'll be looking around at other people, people with their smartphones or tablets out, and you'll be thinking, which one is the enemy? I'm gonna fucking kill him. I just uh, like that the, was a... Go ahead. I, I just like the idea that the other people around the area, just random people with their phones, and you're thinking, you're the enemy, it's you, isn't it? It's kind of funny. That was one of the awesome debates I had with one of my friends who got me hooked on it, was... So... Just walking around and there's blue everywhere and you're just like, who here is a rebel? I am going to tackle them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I've, I, I think that's just awesome. You're having a war with other people and they're actually going to be in the area at the time. 
Um, I know my half brother has been playing that a lot, and he spent I, I I'm not sure how much, but a ridiculous amount on petrol. He's been driving around all over the place, taking over portals in his area, and he spent so much on petrol just to play this game. That sounds like fun. It's like a it's like a virtual uh, scavenger hunt kind of thing going on. It's a on. virtual war, um, and it's a worldwide one with two factions, which is brilliant. Uh, Interesting. What's it called? Ingress. Ingress. Um, Dune-gress. D-U-N-E? Ingress. Ingress. Yeah. But, um, I-N-G-R-E-S-S or something? Yeah, something like that. Just It's a uh, Google application, so if you Google it, it'll definitely correct it. But, um... Like, you believe it is Android specific? I'm not sure. Though. Yeah, you can't get on iOS, unfortunately. Good for you. But um, Android. <laughs> <laughs> like um, my half brother, he was. Oh, it, it was a weekend. He's in the kitchen cooking something to eat, and all of a sudden his tablet starts getting a red alert that some one of his portals has been attacking. He actually turned the cooker off, took his pinny off, got in his car and drove out to that portal and was out for like an hour and a half and then comes back and then finishes cooking and eating. That, that's what this game does to people. He, and uh, so one of the days... He in was, a word, what exactly... So by, by, by being in a place, you then have a some sort of ownership of it he, and then someone might want to attack it to yeah. take it over, yeah. and but then by going back and sitting yourself down there, you then repossess that place. Is that what it is? Well, it's a territory oh, um, based. You take over the world. It's kind of uh, a population thing, and do you get certain resources, don't you? Um, yes, the resource that you use to um, recharge resonators, which are um, what you use to capture a portal, um, you use that, and you can use it if you're not near it by using a portal key. So right now I have portal keys for uh, Portland, Oregon. So I can, if I get a notification that one of those portals is being under is under attack, I can remotely ref refill it so people have a chance, like people up there have a chance to uh, do something about it. Uh, and what do they do about it? Like they, um, I'm not a high level but people up there, they, they're they around like five different portals all the time. So they um, can do stuff about it. They fix it and um, make sure that people can't um, try and take down their resonators. Um, uh, one uh -huh. of the most hilarious ones of my half brother playing it, he was on his way back from work and he noticed that there was a one of the portals um, that nobody had actually captured and he decided he'd take a detour <laughs> on his way back from work he goes and takes a detour just to take over a portal and it was about half an hour out of his way huh. it's like he, he, he's absolutely crazy the copy uh, from the site says uh, Ingress transforms the real world in the landscape for a global game of mystery intrigue and competition our future is at stake, and you must choose a side. A mysterious energy has been earthed by a team of scientists in Europe. The origin and purpose of this force is unknown, but some researchers believe it's influencing the way we think. We must control it, or it will control us. The enlightened seek to embrace the power that this energy may bestow upon us. The resistance struggle to defend and protect what's left of our humanity. Installing Crescent transform your world. So you choose one of the two. Are you resistance or enlightened? I am enlightened. Which means that you want to proliferate this this vile inculcation of energy or something. You're trying to propagate it. Yeah. Yes, I think so. I didn't read too much into the sides and what they're <laughs> attempting to do with the world, but... The yeah, world is the game! Great. So, Move through the real world using your Android device and the Ingress app to discover and tap resources of this mysterious energy. Acquire objects to aid in your quest. Deploy tech to capture territory and ally with other players to advance the cause of the Enlightened or the Resistance. Yeah, you like um, walk around in the street or 
in your car, don't you? And if you're looking at your phone with the map up, or, well, the game, I should say, rather than just the map, uh, there'll be like a little blue dot that's uh, pulsing. Go over to it, you pick it up, and then you get some more energy and stuff that you can use for different things or resources and shit like that. So you're actually finding so stuff in the real world via Google Maps. Right. So on some level, this is one of those time, or what's one of those, what do you call it? like a casual game or a game where, what's the one I played? Like the Nile, where basically, I don't know. But by investing a bit of time, you get extra resources, and then it happens in real time. I don't totally get it, <laughs> but it sounds very interesting. <laughs> it uh, is fun. Another like um, addition to the games that I've been playing is Dwarf Fortress. Trying to micromanage my world. Not working out. People are dying and going insane. <laughs> Good. Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> The deep end single. of the pool, yes. That's cool. Does it take a lot lot of time to learn just so that you can begin? I mean, like in other words, how long did it take before you felt like you were at least playing the game instead of tr studying it to try to figure out how to play it? I'm still I know trying that you never, to how to play it. Yeah, I'm sure you're still trying to figure out how to master it, but at least you can do some things, right? <laughs> yeah, like... Farming is easy. Setting up stockpiles is easy. Um, like the whole terminology, like quantum stockpiles, are just a garbage uh, zone that you set to uh, save all your stone that you mine. Um, it's easy. You just need to be aware of what's going on. Like if you need bins, make bins, or you're going to have miasma everywhere, and people will die. Oh, nice. Uh, and how long, do you, do you, can you, um, is it easy to read the map now with all the little symbols meaning this and that? Um, actually, I use a, um, I use a different tile set, so it's easier, mm -hmm. like, it's not, it's not ASCII graphics, it's just, uh, like, it's actually, um, I don't know. You can see what people are and what they do. Uh huh. Cool. And how do you get that instead of the ASCII graphics? Uh, what was that? How do you get that overlay so that you're not looking at the ASCII graphics, but this other thing? Um, there's actually this uh, neat thing. It's called the Lazy Noob Pack. Uh, I'm not like I didn't name it. Someone else did it. Um comes with a couple of different neat um, uh, like options and utilities. One of them being cool. dwarf therapist, where you can assign different tasks to the dwarfs and um, see what level they are and there are certain uh, crafting whatevers. Uh -huh. Like uh, One of them would be uh, mining. You can see if they're legendary or not. All sorts of stuff. There's uh, one that there's a uh, kind of a template maker where you can like record a certain room pattern that you like and want to use. You can set it up to mine out. Like, it'll designate what areas to mine and what to put in them. So it um, kind of helps you. It kind of plays get, the game for you a bit. It what? Mm. It kind of plays the game for you a bit, like an autopilot. Yeah. You knew, cheater, cheater. But I've already made the room template. I don't see why it's bad to use it. Shh, cheater. Um, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, Does it? Is it roguelike so that you only last with a particular universe for a certain amount of time, and then? You it collapses and you start over or so. You can, so what? Uh, you can make different uh, worlds. Some of them, could, like you, uh, there's advanced generation that you can have going on. Um, like you can have it spawn nothing but uh, 
corrupted areas, so it's like a hardcore mode, if you will. Or you have it spawn nothing but serene uh, things, which have really weird creatures in them that if you piss them off, they will smash your guts out. But they're normally really friendly and like to be tamed. Um, there's, uh, but you can make different worlds and you can inhabit certain parts of them. And I think your uh, relations with the different races, be it elves, uh, humans, or uh, dwarfs themselves, will stay with your race, considering you're a dwarf. Um, uh -huh. so, it's an amazing phenomenon, Dwarf Fortress. I mean, it's made by this one guy, Tarn Adams, this very unusual person. There was that article about him uh, that if you Google Dwarf Fortress, it's almost it's uh, it comes up with the pictures like a portrait of him and ASCII, him and he and his brother, and it's like his life's work. I mean, I think his plan is to just make this. <laughs> Like every day, that's what he does, and he gets these. You know, money just keeps dribbling in because of because it's such an interesting. I don't know because people just new. I don't know new people buy it enough, so he makes a few. You know, I don't know what he makes. Maybe forty thousand dollars a year or something, or something in that you know vicinity, up and down from there, and just manages to make a living and work on this game it's like pet project that everybody's invited to participate in it's pretty a, awesome it's, uh, it is one thing it's that, incredible <laughs> the thing that I'd like to see go ahead yeah. with it is um, a sort of multiplayer aspect I, I know it'd be very very difficult to do but it, right. um, if you have just two people doing one base or two people doing two separate bases attacking those two other people it would be really neat like I think it'd be a fun thing but um like from all the forum posts I've seen about it people are like yeah no this isn't happening because it's blah 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 or blah 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 and I don't I don't know why it'd be so difficult you just have to set up a server and cache some images that's about it uh, well, a uh, there's a quote here stuff. from the wiki wi from Wikipedia that says Tarn Adams considers the games his life's work and has stated that he does not expect version 1.0 to be released for at least another 20 years <laughs> <laughs> I love it I absolutely love it <laughs> I gotta try um, the, I gotta try and get into it but it's uh, there again I mean it's it's just a massive time commitment isn't it I mean to just to get competent well, it's deep. It, if you have people who are willing to like coach you through it, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, That's like, cool. The one guy that I found out was really good at this game and really good at explaining it was uh, I think his name was Sippy Cup, but it spelled it all weird. Um, he had like he just had everything going on. He um, able to explain it and be really good at explaining it too that's cool and how did you come across sippy and how is he able to tutor, tutor you through it given that it's not a multiplayer game um just youtube videos like oh right um my brother showed him to me and that basically how i found him I was like oh and here he is and it was pretty easy that's a good tip we should put that up in the uh in the uh, chat, uh, I cannot, because <laughs> it will get removed by Moobot. No point in putting it in the chat. Nobody's in there. <laughs> no. Literally, uh, we have five viewers. All those viewers are us right now. So I guess everyone in the channel right now gets a copy of Terraria. Oh wait, one of them's a bot, so someone gets two. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh, okay, um, I'm actually on. You, you didn't even know you were in the channel. No, I, I, I was trying not to be. However, if you were giving away a copy of Terraria, I want to be on that. Yeah, you can't win it. <laughs> and then I'll and then I'll take the code and delete it. <laughs> That's such a dick. So, 
Just to be the better um, asshole. Who hasn't said what they're playing? James. So James, what are you playing? James has been playing the drunker game. <laughs> I've been playing uh, quite a bit of Terraria lately. Got back onto that. Been playing uh, with another guest that we had on here with our live stream here a while ago, Pikester. Uh, I've been playing with him quite a bit. Uh, my wife has been playing with me on uh, on it also. Uh, another game that I play. I played a little bit of the Coh uh, Call of not Call of Fucking Company of Heroes. Company Company of Heroes. Uh, played the tutorials of that. I uh, finished all but the two of the tutorial things. Um, rather than that, played uh, some StarCraft today. Uh, well, I've been wanting to start Liberty. Wings of Liberty. I got back into that. It's been like months since I played that. Yeah, we need to stream some of that again. It's been far got, too long. Got back into that. Uh, rather than that, I played a bit of um, oh that one game oh, that uh, Total Total Biscuit did the review of there. Uh, like the death mask or whatever. Um, that no one what, game what, what, TV I, did a review. I was about to say one game. He's done hundreds. Uh, that last one that you uh, watched. Last one that I watched. Did he? Uh. Oh, fuck. Well, what happens in the game? What'd you do? S something in the death mask or something. Somebody in the death mask or. Fuck, what is it? Are you sure you didn't dream this? No, I am not dreaming it. Uh, fudge a dudge. So, it was a demo I got. It, it's, a, it's a pretty fun game. Um, Marlo. Uh, Marlo Briggs and the Ma Mask of Death. Oh, that one. I played. I played that one. Uh, it's it's all right. It's a weird uh, Rather than that, game. I've been playing uh, some more Rainbow Six. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Uh, Rainbow Six Las Vegas. Uh, playing uh, World of Tanks 360 Edition. Um, that's a pretty fun game. Rather than that, I uh, played a little bit of uh, Far Cry 3 here a couple days ago. Just uh, wasted time. Played about maybe half an hour of it or whatever. Hey, James, do you have time. any money into uh, World of Tanks? Uh, no. No no money into it. It was, uh, I, it's, I'm not too sure if it's still currently in the uh, closed beta. But uh, you had to uh, basically fill that put you at a disadvantage. An oh. application you had to fill out an application um, uh, to be able to close beta for uh, 360. It's fun. Uh, I don't know what it was like on uh, PC. Never really played it that much oh, okay. on PC. Tried it once, but uh, seems seems pretty good. It's a fun game. Definitely, I would uh, definitely look in getting it for either the PC or the 360. I mean, I understood uh, it to be a PC on the PC. I thought it was some sort. Of, I thought it was a uh, free-to-play game. Yes, it, it is. is. It is. It is a free-to-play yeah. game, also on 360. Um, so, uh, but so I think the, right the, now the, there is some incentive like to buy yes. better t stuff so that you can what buy armor or something for your basically get stronger. Yeah. <laughs> How how that kind of runs? You go through and you get experience, and with your experience and whatnot, you can unlock uh, better tanks with better armor, uh, more powerful uh, ammunition, whatnot. You can get uh, you know more things that'll hide you better when you're out in the world and whatnot. And it, it's it's pretty fun. Um, I'm I think you you can still pay pay to win type thing you know you can put money into it um, free to play sure. pay to win yeah kind of like well that's obviously that's the problem like for example 
Hawken has problems. I've been playing a lot of Hawken too. Oh yes, that um, was a thing. I played a little bit of Hawken. Yeah, but Hawken, one of its problems. Then again, I played it to a. I've pl been playing the hell out of it. So maybe if you don't play obsessively like I do, maybe that it is a problem. But I don't see like the play to win, pay to win thing as it being a problem for that game. Obviously, the, yeah, the problem I don't. With that I game, don't. I don't see a pay to. Win. I don't see there being much of a pay to win at all in that game. No. Yeah, which is obviously it, to his you, credit. Most of what you can buy is is um. Uh, Cosmetic shit, and uh, you can get everything you need through just by and playing. And boosts, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. And but like, honestly, what, I don't it think does it's have any more pay problems. to win than Planet Side Two. What? You didn't think? I don't think it's any more play to win, pay to win than Planet Side Two is. I would say play. Planet Side Two might be a little more play to um, pay to win. I would too. say a lot more pay to win because you can, you can buy like top weapons and whatnot. Having said just, that, I don't think it, you know. it ruined the game. It certainly didn't ruin the game for me. Then again, I was paying. <laughs> yeah. But I was, in fact, I paid a lot. Um, but that's because I love the game. But anyway, um, I think that I could have gotten by, and I did for quite a while without paying much of anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Planet Side 2 is the most I've ever spent on a game. Yeah, me too. I think. But anyway, to, to finish about Hawken, um,. It, its primary problem is the auto balance. The damn game, er, you know, it seems like five out of, you know, six matches are um, just horrible slaughters. Oh, yeah. And it's just, it's, it gets to be too much. I think I'm, I'm actually leaving that game. I used to, like I said, I played the shit out of it. Oh, but yeah. But every freaking, I mean, it's just... What's the point? You, you just finally you say, wait a minute, this is literally a waste of time because it, it you know. Well, I remember, I remember when we first started playing it. When you and I started playing it, there, you know, you could get on. It was like every other match was different. You know, either you would get totally fucking murdered. Sorry, button language. Was totally murdered, or uh, or you do you would do good and and be boss at it. But now it seems like a lot of it is just die 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 all the time now like just getting yeah slumped. and and and, it, and and it's a lot of it's what team you're on i mean yeah again like that that i play most all mostly only the objectives base occasional team death match but is you're either getting rolled or you're on the team that's that's destroying oh yeah and for sure once in a blue moon there's some back and forth but sometimes to be honest even the back and forth Half of those back and forth games is like they lost a player or a new awesome player came in and is completely changing the game for that team. Yeah. Um, so it's got problems with the uh, balancing. It does. No question. It does. And um, the way the auto, like, um, like you said now, they said they got, they've got parties that you can do. Like when you're in that party, do you get to play with that party all the time? In theory, you do. So just and get so, a group of your so friends like if, together if and you win. So you don't get thrown around in between like you did in the beginning where you had to just by chance pick to be on the right side at the right time to stay there. Yeah. You're basically with your party all the time. That could be part of the problem right there. You know, everybody that's good as like it's because the game's been out for a long time, right? Yeah, and I'm afraid so everybody that the, just the new parties update, up. With... Yeah, and the new update has just I think exacerbated those. Uh, it's just aided this the the it's polarized the skill differential even more. Well, one thing I noticed more tweaking that you can do. So. Oh yeah. The you people can tweak who can, a lot of stuff now. The skill guys who can take advantage of that just get even more powerful vis-a-vis -vis everybody else, and I mean that's a, a lot of the problem that, of this balance that I'm that from what I can see is that certain players just own so much that it's just you're playing in their game. One thing <laughs> I found out uh, that I noticed about the lobbies now is the way they got it. Okay, yeah, it looks a lot better and whatnot, but they made it confusing. 
like before, okay, you used to go to one area, you could see the bots that you had, that you bought and that you were working up on and everything else. And then you go to another spot and you can see the bots that you can buy. Well, now you go to your garage and it gives you a list of like 10 different bots that you can play all of them, but you kind of got to pay attention to what ones were yours because you got doubles of some of them and and right and yeah that's i i fell into that trap where i was playing one that uh, a bot that i thought i had activated and was had been playing but in fact i was playing a copy a different the same bot the same with with yeah. these particular characteristics but it was a different version of that so mm -hmm. i wasn't leveling up the same guy yeah yeah it's yeah, there's pro maybe the leveling system is in question too a little bit because you can spread points around, so it makes it less meaningful that you have to play one particular. But it it addresses the question that a lot of people probably had, which is, why would I ever once I've leveled up all the way, why would I ever play that guy again? Well, yeah, uh, and I don't think the solutions came out that to 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 advantage that whole system in terms of your incentive. All that while. Well, yeah, now now the only time, okay, you got a big guy that you're doing lots of slaughtering with, getting lots of that, a lot of experience in that with, okay, I'm going to play this guy for about 5, 10, 15 rounds, and then just spread the points that I got from him to my other bots to make them boss. Right. Before, it was like, okay, do I want to keep leveling this guy up? He's almost to the max. You know, uh, do I switch to another one? try to change it up to help out my team and whatnot and it's a little more guesswork behind the other one I guess you could say. Fair enough. So anybody else have anything more for our little segment that we like to call What You Been Playing? That was totally purely what we've been playing. Uh, I guess it was. League of Legends. Sorry, I had to throw it in. Uh oh, dangerous. Did anyone ask Steve what he's playing? Wait, yeah, and then never mind. You're on a long tangent. Sorry, I haven't been paying attention. What? Go figure. At exactly. two phenomenon. At two. I think that's it. That's all I've been playing. Um. Rather than my Facebook games or game. Well, it doesn't look like we're going to be doing a giveaway because, hey, we've still got not one single viewer. I guess because the kitty cat on the Mr. Scoober's picture is so cute, we'll just give that kitty cat every single code. <laughs> yes. No, that doesn't mean you Wait. get them. Oh. It means the cat gets them, and then the cat can play Terraria on several computers at once and fight itself. Because it's a cute cat, and I'm sure it's smart enough to do that. Ah, okay. Anyway, so, uh, what have you guys seen so far in terms of Terraria 1.2? I've seen a little. I've seen a little bit, like um, the. Updates where they're gonna have new bosses, or not really new bosses, but better bosses type thing. Some new bosses. Um, I guess the the uh, oh, the one for the castle. They got a new name for that. Um, no. If you're talking about the dungeon, Skele Skeletron or something like that. Yeah, it's it. still the same. Still the same, but they named it different. No, it, it was like always called Skeletron. Oh, was it? I thought it was oh different. Oh, God. <laughs> I thought it was something not quite. Hey, well, folks, so uh, we are definitely, we, we, you, you want to trust us when it comes to all your Terraria news? <laughs> Just so you know, we're, 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 we're good with our Terraria. We know everything there is to know about Terraria. Some of us do. Um, okay, who, who else? Anyone heard anything? Oh, in that case, more? Jess, start talking. <laughs> <laughs> what have you guys heard about it, though? I've heard great things about it. It's been in progress. Like, the update has been in progress since the beginning of the year. And it's been... I'm just not it. simply... Like, I'm just not simply put that much time into an update. Unless it's going to be 
freaking awesome. Yeah, it's been, um, it's pretty much a year that Redigit has been working on it now, along with the new Spriter for the um, graphics. Um, and it is confirmed that, of course, um, there is over 1,000 items now. I think the new content is like 700 items has been added on top of Quite those already in there. Um, the 1,000th item, of course, everyone who's taken an interest in it will already know, was a party popper style gun. Which I, I, I want so bad, I'm just saying. Oh, the confetti gun? Yeah. I, I yeah. so want that gun. I'm just saying, that that's the only reason I'm going to be playing 1.2, to get that gun. And maybe a I've, beach ball. I've watched a few of the, few of the trailers of people, but... When putting out uh, some, you know, sneak peeks of 1.2 and whatnot, uh, I watched the Total Biscuit and Jesse Cox one. Uh, they got penguins in it now, and uh, ginormous um, sl uh, slime with umbrellas and and the zombies yeah. with rain rain slickers and and Eskimo zombies and hey, that's a derogatory term. So, what not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Inuit, Inuit. <laughs> yeah. So there's um, uh, there's sort of a weather system to it, although it's aesthetic only. Um, when it starts raining, certain monsters will spawn, like the slimes with the umbrellas, the zombies with raincoats and stuff like that. But it, <laughs> the rain doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't flood your world. There's no water that actually settles. So. I mean, it's cool that it's there, though. It looks good. It um, splits it up a bit, rather than just always having exactly the same weather theme. Another thing I liked about uh, some of the things they have, the, the new ice biome they have, there you can get ice blocks, uh, snowballs and whatnot, that'll actually do damage if you throw them at people. Yeah, or a at small amount. Enemies. Which will make it a little bit easier, you know, <laughs> mine up a little bit of uh, snow and you can use it as a weapon. <laughs> a very crap weapon, but a weapon nonetheless, and it is ranged well, yeah. at least. Um, like, if, you, if you're starting out the game and you go in there, oh, geez, well, let's, you know, get a bunch of snow to, you know, be just that extra weapon. Yeah, true point. Uh, later on, you can That's get a snowball video. cannon. Yes, the cannons that they have, and also the fireworks I've seen. Fireworks um, actually deal damage, believe it or not. Oh yeah, like I've, seen, I've seen uh, a one preview of it, where the dude killed Skeletron with fireworks. Yeah, there's <laughs> uh, been a few, I believe he's killed most of the bosses with fireworks. The uh, only thing... Yeah. The all the flesh and everything. The yeah. only things we haven't really seen anything of at all, we don't know a single thing about hard mode. The only thing we know about hard mode is it's supposed to have huge changes to previous hard mode versions. So, well, another thing that we never really seen of yet, uh, whether it is just straight up speculation or whatnot, is this brand new boss. That is the side of the the size of the world. Yeah, that that's going to be something in hard mode. So we, we don't know anything about hard mode. Um, but uh, anyone else heard any more things that's new? Um, Not really. No. Paintbrush. Paintbrush. Got, yes, there's one. Yeah, the paintbrush. They got uh, dyes for. For uh, um, your blocks, and you can change color of the water and whatnot. So um, um, the way the paint works, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, we might be losing none here. He's gone. Uh, he's already been gone for a bit. No, uh, he's no, 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 he's just uh, messaging me. Yeah, he, he just uh, dropped out of the call again because I did try adding him back. Let's see. Ah, do we have you here, Nolan? Yes, yes, we do. Oh wow, what? your microphone sounds beautiful. I don't even That's see that. him in the call. He's there. Anyway, um, so the big thing. Well, one of the things um, that I want to know is the mini map. What do you guys think of what we've seen on the mini map? 
I don't think in. I, I don't know. I think it would have been more better for them to like put in a craftable map. I also feel like that would have been a better choice for that. And scoop. I think it, like, it depends on how it works with um, leaving and joining back servers. Like, if it keeps all your stuff, like, cached, then it would be pretty good. But if you have to go back through and redo it all, that's going to, I don't know, put a damper on everything. Redo it all? Do you mean re-uncover the map? No, like, re, like, yeah, like that. I feel dumb. <laughs> like, to go through and um, basically review it, like, run around for a bit, but... Now, so, uh, the way it works is, if you've been on the map and you've uncovered some it's going to stay there. Um, well, what Phenomenon said about a craftable map, yeah, I agree, it would have been cooler if you didn't start with a map and you had to get to a certain tier and actually craft out some materials, that would be cool. But either way, the map itself and the map system is, from what I've seen, brilliant. You've got several maps, you've got a mini-map and the traditional style up in the top right corner under your health and beside your mana and um, you've got yeah. a full screen map where you can see the entire map and scroll around and have a look at it zoom in zoom out you can also zoom in and zoom out on a mini map as well of course and uh, that will scroll as you move around and uncover stuff uh, you've got the overlay map which is like the old diablo style where the map is on the screen transparent so that you can see the map at all times but can still see what you're doing or, of course, oh, that's cool. if you don't like the minimap, which I know um, quite a few people are saying they don't, you can turn it off completely. The, yeah, that's what Jesse Cox did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Um, but the big <coughs> thing about the map is if you go into the full screen view and you zoom right in and you're looking at difficult blocks, you can mouse over. For example, if you see a bright green block, mouse over it and it will actually tell you that it is an emerald it will tell you where chests oh, nice. are, it will tell you where there's a pot, yeah, see, it tells you everything. That, 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 that just sounds way too OP. It even uh, tells you where there's ores, so if you've been past somewhere and not noticed and you're later looking at the map and it's in like a wall in a cave, you can mouse over and it will tell you what ore it is. Um, there are a lot uh, of new ores, at least in the beginning of the game, we now have, what is it, it's uh, lead, Tin, Lead, tungsten, yeah. platinum. You've got the old standard ones, which are copper, silver, iron, gold. Of course, you still got those. There's, uh, I, pretty sure there's going to be more in hard mode. Can't really confirm it though. Um, waterfalls are now a thing. Yes, you can make waterfalls by creating a half block in any body of water. Anything that goes over that half block will automatically teleport back to the top. So it won't flow and flood anything. It's just the same bit of water going round in a loop kind of thing, which is cool because oh, it's got a really nice aesthetic to it. Uh, that could be handy for you know getting down somewhere without dying, or does that work still the same? Way? Um, it seems to be that you can't actually go with you can't float down it from what I've seen, but it's not completely sure because from what I've seen, it, most people just run straight through it, so it's hard to tell, but. It doesn't yeah. seem like it acts like normal flowing water. And there's another point, the water when it flows, if you break like a few blocks and it starts flowing out, if you're looking at the map, it actively animates the flowing of the water. Which I find pretty cool that you can watch where it's all flowing to. Um, oh, what was the other thing with water? Uh, oh no, uh, the blocks. In terms of half blocks, you can have a half flat block or half corner block either way. However, you cannot have an upside down half block. So if you are making some form of sculpture, you can only have the half blocks in the top half of your model. So it might look smooth on the top half, but the bottom half is still going to be a bit blocky. Um, it, you can make that's it weird. a half block, but it kind of floats. It's like there's a split in the wall. So. That's a little bit unfortunate, you can't rotate it, at least not as far as I've seen. Um, as far as colouring goes, there's uh, the new NPC, the painter, and you can buy yeah. a paintbrush off him for painting blocks, a paint roller for painting back walls, and a paint scraper for taking off uh, the colours. I believe 
you can actually mix the paint colors to make your own custom colors um, the same as you can now do with the dyeing system the dyes yeah. you can make a ridiculous amount of different ones including textured dyes so you can texture your armor in different ways so the amount of possibilities is insane with that and they got a ton of more different clothing too that you can get yeah well as far as armor goes i think you can do it with every tier now you can even have believe it or not you can have an entire house made out of cactus all yeah. your furniture made out of cactus your armor made out of cactus and all of your tools and weapons you can have cactus I, everything it's brilliant you, you can even have ice uh, furniture and whatnot well yeah yeah uh, also if you make it igloo so I can finally recreate my house my house in Terraria yeah uh, another thing that I know I thought that was kind of neat you know pretty cool was in the in the uh, preview that Jesse Cox and Total Biscuit had made their little house that they had pre-made had skulls in the wall because of the blue blocks that Jesse had Well, brought. it wasn't actual skulls. It was just the way it textured. I don't think it, it was It animated actual. as skulls, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there's but that, a lot of different... But still pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of different materials. Also, doors, which I find really unfortunate from what we've seen of people who have the 1.2 release and are allowed to show it off. Nobody yet, as far as I've seen, has made any other door other than a normal wood one. I want to know what an iron door looks like. I st yeah. Or a gold door, any other door. Why does everyone just make the boring old wood doors that we've seen hundreds of thousands of times now? I, I mean, I know it's just going to be exactly the same door with a different texture and looks different, but I still want to see it. And I want to know what the advantage is to it. Maybe having a metal door on a blood moon the zombies can't kick it down or something like that or it takes them longer to we don't yeah. know um, the amount of new weapons is a, a huge crazy amount the one that I'm wanting the most I can't remember the name of it but it looks it, it's a laser that refracts off of surfaces now that is uh, a shadow boom that's the shadow one beam. yeah I, I yeah. mean that thing I, I need that but no doubt that's going to be an end game hard mode weapon most likely that you need some Whoa, sort of our sound for. quality just went sucky well, it sounds fine on my end um, so yeah that's a lot of new content already there the amount of new enemies there's a, a sane amount uh, to start off with the basics you've got your normal zombies but you've also got a lot of other zombies that are basically the same but just a different type to um, shake it up a bit. The, Some the, Inuit zombies. Huh? Uh, Eskimo zombies. Yeah, yeah, you got the Inuit Eskimo zombies, which are kind of cool. I, I'm hoping that if you kill enough of them, you'll eventually get an Inuit outfit. That'd be so freaking awesome. I want to be an Eskimo. <laughs> you can have themes or something too, wasn't it? Have what? Like the themes, you can get those or something. Themes? Like you can have a marshmallow roast, it's gonna be marshmallows and shit. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen that, I don't think. Maybe. Oh, uh, th there is a. I, I have no idea how or what exactly, but there is a bunny gun. You've got a bunny rabbit cannon. A bunny rabbit yes, cannon. Yes, there is a bunny <laughs> cannon. It's a thing. A bunny cannon. I, I, I want one. Um, there's a star in a bottle. I have no idea what it does yet, though. Nobody's made one from what I've seen. Which, star in a bottle? Yeah, I know, right? You want to know what it does, but nobody's making them yet. Everyone has the stars in the bottles to do it that have 1.2, and yet nobody's made one and showing it off. Uh, it's probably just a small thing though. Maybe it boosts your mana for a certain amount of time or something like that. I don't know. Um, mana maybe. is now cheaper. You only need five stars to make a blue mana star. So you can get mana a lot quicker. Um, mm -hmm. Magic items. Did, uh, well, weapons in general, there's a lot more. There's newer, higher damage weapons now. But not to a crazy state that you'd just be OP from the beginning. 
which is definitely a good thing. But uh, there's a lot of new stuff there. The floating islands. Has, right? Has anyone seen a floating island from 1.2? Not from 1.2, no. Phenomenon. No. Nope. Scoob. No, I have not. Uh, so I'm the only one then. Okay, the floating islands have completely changed. They are now made out of cloud. There's a bit of dirt blocks on some of them, but it's mainly cloud blocks. Some of them actually have rain cloud blocks that you can mine, and if you put them somewhere else, it will continue to rain, which is kind of cool. They always seem to have little um, waterfalls coming off the sides of them as well, which fade out as they get lower to the ground, which is really awesome. But the strange thing is, um, well, for one, it's got a very weird door and a little house that's up there now. I have no idea what it's made out of, but it's a very strange door with this symbol on. The chest matches it, and so do the actual blocks that the little hut is made out of. The thing that I'm disliking about the new floating islands is the factor of the chest. You can just open it, you don't need a key. No, you don't need a key anymore. Yeah, you just walk up to the chest and you can open it from the... I mean, if you, for example, went in your brand new world, brand new character, and you happen to be lucky and find a chest with a gravitation potion in it very soon on, you can just fly up there, find a floating island, and get a really good weapon out of the chest, because you don't need a key. I th Personally, I think you should have to have a key to get in those chests, because more often than not, they have very good, very powerful high-end gear, and you should not have them too early, otherwise it makes the game too easy at early stage. You could end up with a weapon that is way past the tier of armor that you are on. Uh, the, the Star Fury has been nerfed hugely. Uh, Star Fury now only shoots down a single star, um, which does an average of like 20, 26 damage. It is meant now, rather than a spell or magic weapon, as more of a melee weapon, so use it like a proper sword. Don't bother using the actual falling star that it spawns to kill things, because it will take for fucking ever. Noisy bugger. Uh, where did you find the image for floating islands? Um, not an image, a live stream. I'll send you the link uh, in a bit. But um, there's also, of course, loads of new monsters in the jungle biome. You've got jungle spiked slime. You've also got um, ice spiked slime, which you saw on TB and Jesse Cox's playthrough. And they actually shoot little spikes at you, and they do quite a bit of damage, and they are quite strong. And you see these at the very, well, very soon in, because generally an ice biome is going to be close by to the spawn most of the time. So, yeah, that's quite a, a... It's a mean monster at the beginning of the game to go up against, definitely. Um, what else have we seen? I've only seen one of the new bosses. At the moment, Cthulhu is still exactly the same. Um, but the new they boss... Have a, they have a resonator. A resonator? Or something like that. Um. Extractinator. No, it's like the I Cthulhu uh, retinator. That's what it is. What's that? It looks exactly like like the I Cthulhu, but it's got like this robotic eye. A robotic eye? Yeah, it looks like a robotic eye, like or Where did something you see like this that one? coming out of it. Oh, I just. Uh, Typed in uh, Terraria 1.2 in uh, YouTube, and it was in uh, the one where the dude kills all of the bosses at the same time, like fights all the bosses at the same time. I forget. Wait, was it? Was this boss like two Eye of Cthulhu's in one? I don't know, no, because when he was fighting, there was two Eye of Cthulhu's there, and he yeah. spawned everything. The, yeah, well, I'm the, saying there's two Eye of Cthulhu's, and they're kind of, like, attached, and one of them fires lasers, and the other has another thing, yeah? It didn't look like they were attached, like they were flying apart, like... 
was there a big uh, worm as well? A yes, huge mechanic? big yeah. worm. So what you're uh, talking the about is the wall twins. of flesh, the skeleton, uh, all the bosses. Um, none of those are new ones, though. That's just uh, current version hard mode. Um, the, the one you're talking about, that robotic one, is the twins. And well, it was it was a 1.2 update. Because he was saying at the end he was thanking Red and uh, Red and them for letting them do it. I forget what his name was. Interesting, because uh, none of those are new bosses, and they're not allowed to show um, hard mode, so it can't be all the new bosses. Nobody's allowed to show hard. Well, mode. no, there was it was four of the bot. Not, not my bad. Not all of the new bosses, but four bosses. Uh, four bosses, but Cthulhu is still the same. It was, it was, yeah, it was the uh, wall of flesh. It had the worm. Eater of worlds. Um, the eater of worlds. You got Cthulhu. And Cthulhu easy mode is definitely exactly the same as it always was. Oh, could it could have been attached to uh, Cthulhu. It was called the retinator, though. I have no idea what it is. I'm going to have to look that up later because I haven't seen this. Um, but, yeah, the, the only... Um, boss that we've actually seen so far of the new bosses is the Queen Bee. So if you go into the jungle and uh, you've got the hornets as always, oh, which by the way seem to spawn a lot more, a lot quicker now, and they move very fast. Uh, horrible little buggers. Um, but you can come across a randomly spawned hive. Now the hive is a beehive, as you'd expect, it's a massive, like, a sub-biome type thing, you know, it's the huge things. And if you blo break a block of the outer skirts of the hive, it will spawn two very small bees that are annoying as hell to hit and do quite a bit of damage every time you break one of those blocks. Once you get inside the hive, I'm not sure if it's there every time, but um, from what I saw, there was like a little grub in a honey sack type thing. That's what it looked like. And on breaking it, yeah, that spawns the queen bee, which is, a, as you can probably massive guess, bee. Yeah, a massive fuck-off bee that comes and flies in and kills you. Um, inside the hive is a liquid flowing around. Yes, as you can guess, it is honey. It um, has adverse effects that slow you down and stuff. So, if you're gonna fight the queen bee, don't fall into honey. You'll be screwed. You need to be able to move. Um, Does it have any uh, positive effects or just slows? Uh, oh, don't really know, but it definitely slows you down. Um, I, I doubt it has positive effects. It's there to piss you off, most likely. Um, Oh yeah, I'm surprised we haven't mentioned it already, the fact that you can walk up one block inclines. It is yeah. so much easier to get across the world, especially if you have um, any form of <coughs> boots, whether it's Hermes boots or more advanced ones. You can just run for ages most of the time and jump the two or three block ones. As long as it's a uh, single block incline, you can just run straight over it, which makes getting around a lot easier. Um, Climbing claws are a thing, so climbing claws, you can grip onto a wall and slide down it. You can also grip on a wall, jump, and then grip onto the wall on the other side, so you can wall jump back and forth to get to the top of somewhere. And, and combine that with spiked shoes, you can just stick to a wall. You won't slide down or anything, you'll just stick to it, and you can stay there as long as you want. So it's kind of like a grappling hook, but without having to shoot it out. As far as grappling hooks go, they're... Basically, you're Spider-Man. Yeah, pretty much. Um, as for grappling hooks, there is a shit ton of new grappling hooks. So, to make a better grappling hook than your standard one, you can do it with gems. The higher tier of gem that you use, the further it will reach. So, for example, a diamond one is going to obviously reach further than an amethyst one. And, of course, they do change colour depending on which gem you use. Of course, I'm going to go with a ruby one because it's almost pink when you look at it. So, I don't care about the diamond one. It, it can you could go get a diamond one. wonder if the uh, paint colours would work for that kind of thing. 
Yeah, uh, don't know. I don't think you can paint the items there. Doesn't seem to be a system there from what I've seen. Um, you never know if you can paint your armor. You sh should be able to paint your weapons. Well, no, because they work completely different. See, uh, with armor, you've got slots, as always. You've got your free armor slots, you've got your free vanity slots, and then you have free slots next to that for dye. So you can just put your dye on whatever you're wearing, and it will change mm -hmm. the color of it, and then you can take it off. Whereas weapons, they just go in your normal inventory. There isn't a color slot, so True you probably ch can't change the color of them, unfortunately. That would you're be kind of cool. You're right. Um, that would be cool if you could. It would. Uh, there's some form of fountain thing that if you take it somewhere and set it down, it will change the color of water in that area. Um, each biome now has a different color to the water. As soon as you cross a border into, say, a desert, all the water is going to turn yellow. If you go into corruption, all water is going to turn purple. Uh, the coolest um, I've seen so far is if you're in a blood moon, yeah, all of the water in the world turns blood red and it looks fucking awesome. That'd be cool. Another thing that I noticed in the, the videos that I was watching about that, the background is spectacular now. Some of the sights you can see and whatnot, rather than just the, the regular old plain stuff that we're used to. Yes. They've got some actually awesome backgrounds now. Yes, like the uh, even just the standard background in the forest biome is way prettier than it used to be. And then, of course, if you go uh, the, the actual back wall looks better it looks smoother if you go down into caves there'll be often um, a lot of green moss on the back wall rather than just the constant plain brown um, back wall which is just dirt and um, further down I mean you got the ice biome which has different back walls depending on how deep you are and whereabouts you are in it, it just looks amazing throughout while we're on the top of the biomes, another one of the things that I'd seen in one of these things is um, there's like some kind of a gun or or somewhat that in, no matter what biome you are, you can change the biome to whatever you want it to be. So it shoots out? Uh, shoots out like it, it's like, you know that book that you gave me that looks like the water shooting out of it? Yeah. What well, about? it's a gun like that. But it changes the biome. Any biome, any biome, you could, like, go across the whole world and make it all, uh, for say, the Mushroom Kingdom. You can make it all look like Mushroom oh, Kingdom. Cool. I haven't seen that. I'm gonna have to look that one. Or way. you, or you can make it all uh, desert or yeah jungle I or snow biome or the regular. I wonder how that works. Uh, I'm going to assume that it's kind of like um, you can get the seeds for like corruption and you can spread corruption like that currently and you can mm -hmm. get purification powder of course to turn it into um, normal forest biome so it's probably a case of ammo that you put into it and then you go fire it about kind of thing depending on like, which biome you want like likely what it was it would say but on it it said uh, um, if you happen to be in corruption or whatever else you could change it from being corruption to just regular that's cool. So at that point, can you just use the uh, purification models that you can throw at the ground? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I say. I mean, it's probably something like that. You can either use that to do it, or you can get this gun later and actually put ammo in it and probably do it really rapidly. Oh yeah, like the the way this guy was looking at, it, he was just shooting the gun and running. Yeah, it's. Like, uh, I'm oh, guessing my... it's like a mini shark, the machine gun. I'm not too sure. It's just it was just shooting. He was shooting it up on an angle, and as he was running back, the whole biome behind him was changing. Interesting. I'm gonna have to yeah. look into that one. Um, it looked really cool when he changed it all to uh, the Mushroom Kingdom because that was freaking awesome. Everything was glowing like bluish. That's cool. Yeah, I think I know which one he's talking about. I haven't seen that one. Um, just. You'll see a whole bunch of them. Go to YouTube and just type in Terraria 2.1. Yeah, I'll, or have, 1. A, 2, sorry. I'll, I'll have a and look later. Shitloads of videos in there. Mm. I've been, been mainly watching big coverage things like the really long lives. I watched, uh, it was something like a six hour live stream the other day of 1.2. Oh my god. It was so long and by the most annoying person, I'm not going to say who, but oh, I wanted to kill myself watching that. 
Um, but, oh, what else has to be, uh, pyramids? Honest, uh, has anyone else seen a pyramid yet? I caught a glimpse of it in the thing, but it wasn't very done over. It was just like, oh, there's pyramids now. Uh, so no one's seen inside the pyramids. Not really. Uh, this in Twitch, please. Okey pokey. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> they, oh, God, it's terrible. Somebody else posted that link. I can't right now for some reason. It's not letting me select it. So, oh, yeah. pyramids in... 1.2, at least from what I've seen, I mean, it, I, I guess it's subject to change, we have no idea what version these people are streaming, the release build might have more to it, but at the moment, it is a zigzag staircase that goes really far down, and that's it, it generally has one to two chests, and it's got bags of money, that's it, there's nothing to them. I'm really hoping that when it comes out that it's not like that because if that's all a pyramid is then there is no freaking point in having them. You may as well just have more caves under there and have it chests in the cave because that's all it is from what I've seen so far. I really want more in the um, pyramids so I'm crossing my fingers for that. Um, the dungeon, of course, completely reskinned. Uh, if you go by I've TB and Jesse Cox's um, look of it, they're saying it's kind of like a demonic Starbucks, which I have to agree with the seats and chairs. What's demonic the Starbucks? Yeah, the, the, I thought that was absolutely <coughs> awesome when he was like, I'm outside the demonic Starbucks, and TB's just like, what the fuck, basically. Uh, that was good. Um, Ocean. Ocean biome is pretty much exactly the same as it always was, however there are, well, from what I've seen in that particular play, there was a shit ton more chests than normal, rather than just a possibility of getting one. Uh, yeah, th I this think one that's had what like, said. This one had about four or five, and uh, one of the items he got was a beach ball. A beach ball? Yeah, I want this item. So the beach ball is a one-time use consumable item. You pick it up, you put it in your inventory, you put it on your action bar, you use it. And a big we'll beach ball... For having fun. And a big <laughs> beach ball will appear. And all you can do is kick it about by walking into it. That's what the beach ball is for. He didn't shoot it though, I wish he had. Maybe like a pickaxe, maybe you can pop it. Um, it looked like you can't actually pick it back up. Maybe you can if you use a certain tool. I don't know. Um, maybe a hammer or something like that, yeah. Maybe. Oh, there's a point. Um, for the whole smoothing out of blocks, like the uh, half blocks, corner blocks, stuff like that, you now you if you hit a an actual block, not a back wall type one, but a standard block, like a wood block or a stone block, with a hammer... That will uh, it will scroll through half block, um, left slant, or, or, uh, left corner block or right corner block, and it will keep looping yeah. through and go back to a normal yeah. one. Um, and another thing they did um, with the with your torches, you no longer have to put them on the ceiling. Yeah, you can put you them, put on, them the back on the wall. back. Um, only to a certain depth. If you go further down into the underworld and stuff, you can't put it on the back wall. It has to be the ones that are more forward and static. Um, but the, the problem that I'm seeing with the whole um, half blocks thing is if you're doing a big project and you like to design and build stuff, it's going to be very slow and tedious to have to go and hit the blocks each time and scroll through just to get the half block that you're wanting. Um, also, it's, if you're hitting stuff inside the house by accident when you're taking out the back walls, it's going to be really annoying because you hit a block once, you're going to have to scroll through to make it back to a normal block again. Oh, so, really? There's no way like just to like cancel it out? No, you can't go back. You have to scroll through. I mean, there's only a few blocks that it goes through, but if you... I mean, the amount of times that you're going to end up doing it, I can already tell you're going to have to do it loads. So that's going to get oh, yeah. kind of annoying. They should have had, like, a, another tool that you can get out and Yeah, get like if you're, fighting, if you're fighting, like, an Eye of Cthulhu or something, and you accidentally have your hammer out or whatever the heck it is, 
All of a sudden you're changing all these blocks. Yeah, if you're fighting the Eye of Cthulhu with a hammer, you're an idiot. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, but, you, know, you might be, you might be, you know, trying to do something in the world, and all of a sudden the Eye of Cthulhu spawns and <laughs> you change to your weapon. Me. Trust me, but uh, well, you would. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, that, that I mean that's got the slight problem there, but it's not a huge one. It, it's great that you can the... do the half blocks. Do they still have the uh, shift key act of... Uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, anytime you want to get an item out that you would currently be using, just hold shift and put your mouse over the type of block that you're going to hit, or n over nothing for a torch, and if you're in water, or if you're outside of water, you put it further away, it will bring out a glow stick. Yes, yeah, cool. so you can actually switch between glow stick and torch without having to do it in your inventory, just by moving it further away from your character. Nice. Um, but of course that's old features that are just still in there. Doesn't seem mm -hmm. like they've put anything more onto that. There is of course confirmed um, new NPCs. I can't remember how many. I think it's something like seven. Uh, I'm not sure of the exact number but there's quite a few new NPCs and there's a few of them that apparently don't move in. Oh, really? Yeah, that's all I know of it. I don't know what these new NPCs are, don't know what they do, don't know what they look like, or where to find them. But apparently, Senex said that there are NPCs that do not move into your house, if you even if you've got a spare room. So, whatever those guys are doing, I hope they're not places that are hard to get to. There's also a ton more uh, um, armor sets, too, that you can get. Well, yeah, I mean, naturally, with the amount of different tiers of materials you've got now, there's loads more tiers of armor. I mean, your starting armor is now wood armor. Each piece gives you one defense, and I'm not sure that TB, I think it was, said um, for having the full set, you get a bonus one defense I've that. heard something like that well too. I heard him say it but I was looking at it and I didn't actually see it there maybe I just missed it but um so that would be what one two three so that would be four defense starting off and that's easy to get so that's actually that's decent um since oh, you, they... you can make it for free pretty much another thing I just thought of they actually have actual working elevators uh well Okay, so the elevators now, uh, as far as I've seen, hopefully, fingers crossed later on, the, you can do more with it with the electronics once you get the mechanic. But at the moment, if you dig a hole or you want to go anywhere, you have rope or rope coils which you can throw, which is kind of insane. You like throw it and it suddenly, if it hits a block, it will unravel. But um, your standard rope is blocks of rope, you put one down, and then you add another one to the same block. You do not put it lower, you do not put it higher. If you put it on the same block, it will automatically put it at the bottom of that string. So you can like lower a rope down into a cave, climb down there, no fall damage kind of thing. So using that, you can make an up elevator now, although it would be very expensive, especially in a large world. The amount of rope you need is a lot, because you need I'm not one sure. rope per block. I'm not too sure how they were doing it, but there was actual elevators in some of the ones that I was looking at. Like, didn't look like a you know a natural elevator, but they, it, they called it an elevator. Were they automated? Yeah, I think. An automated panel that takes you up. I'm not too sure what it was. Like, I couldn't really tell, but they, they were calling it an, an actual elevator. Oh, I'll uh, look into that one, and if there's more news to be said on that, we will definitely cover it on the channel, and we'll what talk be, about that. Could but, be um, another thing that we could cover on the Q and A that uh, hopefully is going to happen. Uh, d almost certainly not now. But um, oh no! Oh really? Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, it was hoping for tonight, but it doesn't look like they're going to have time to, which is unfortunate. Um. But, yeah, I mean, just uh, as it goes with even the ropes, uh, that is awesome. And oh, yeah. what you've seen, it if is. it is an automated uh, elevator, I am assuming it works with the chains, because you can make metal chains and use them in the same way. And they are the same chains that you currently use uh, for making, like, a sawmill and stuff like that, but you can now use them in the same way as a rope. 
sawmill um, or a grappling hook. Or... Yeah, but hopefully you'll like maybe put a string of that down the shaft of the elevator, and then maybe attach a panel to it, add a switch, and add some wires, and maybe that will make an elevator that's automated. If it does, then oh, thank fuck. I'm well, really hoping they do that. Like I said, they didn't go too much into it, but they were saying, you know, they were showing it, the working elevator, you know, this guy was constantly going up. I don't know if he was, you know, just pushing up and climbing something. Uh, was uh, or, was or there like a little was. ring above him? Uh, pardon me? Was there like a little ring above his character's head? A little Not ring that I can thing. remember. Ah, okay, well, I'll definitely look into that, because at the moment, um, in terms of climbing, you have this little pulley system kind of thing, which is really awesome. Yeah, like I said, I, I'm not too sure exactly how it was working or what, what it was actually made out of, but still, if, if, if no matter how it works, that's, that's awesome. Instead of, you know, just falling and having to climb your way up. Yeah. You know, usually, like for elevators, like because they were saying people can actually make actual elevators. I absolutely hated that. Oh, oh wow, we have viewers. Hi, people. Thank you for actually coming and viewing this terrible discussion. Wait, we are, we are, we are people uh, When is giveaway? Well, we kind of said a little while ago that we're not doing the giveaway because we have no viewers. We literally, at the time, had only our souls viewing. Um, but we said at the beginning of the live stream when we had a couple of viewers, if we can get enough viewers in, then we will do a random giveaway. Um, but uh, at the moment, it doesn't look like we're going to get enough viewers for that. I mean, we can't really do a giveaway with only two or three viewers because uh, that wouldn't really work. It's a whole random raffle pick. So I've... in inviting more people... You kind of have less chance of winning, but more chance of winning because we'll actually do the giveaway. I'd say give us at least 10, 10 viewers and oh, uh, we can try to do shit. that. Oh, guys, I love you. I or love you five guys. Or something. Uh, one Shaw Kill and Timmy21, I love you both. It's the first time I've ever used Reddit and it paid off. While you guys were discussing. You get your some, friends in here. Uh, while you guys were discussing some game earlier. I wasn't listening at all. I actually signed up for a Reddit account for the first time in my life and posted the link to the podcast, and we've actually got viewers. <laughs> cool. Cool. I'm kind of shocked. So, that's awesome. But, um, awesome. Yeah, what was I about to say? Oh, of course, um, triple jump is a thing. Maybe more. We don't know as yet. But, triple um, jump. The hmm. furthest I've seen so far is triple jump, which is your standard jump. Plus a cloud in the bottle, so you got your double jump. Plus yeah. a, a, it's like a tornado in a bottle or a, a sand. Uh, I think it was sandstorm in a bottle, something like that. Which is like uh -huh. a little sand twister tornado that you can find in um, chess and pyramids and stuff. And that is like a double jump in the same way as a cloud in a bottle, but it's much longer. It's really high, and if you put those on at the same time, you get triple jump. You can yeah, probably... Timmy just said in the chat here you can have lots of jumps. Do we know? Is there any official number, Timmy? Do you know? Because I haven't seen any official number. Um, I've, I haven't heard anything about that really, so I can't really say. Sand in a bottle, cloud in a bottle, and flying carpet. Ooh, I did not see the spoiler on the flying carpet. That sounds wonderful. Right on. Normal cloud in a bottle plus sandstorm in a bottle. There's a snow one like sandstorm. That's cool. Um, what I want to know is, Tinkerer's Workshop, can you get all of these different bottles, add them together so you get them all in one? One thing that I've noticed is there are a lot more um, accessories like these, but you still only have the same amount of accessory slots. You have to be very careful in what you choose to keep. Mm -hmm. You will, I, I think a lot of people are going to find themselves sacrificing one of their <coughs> jumps for health regen or um, more mana and stuff like that, um, maybe faster mellow speed. Hopefully One thing you might... you'll get to just compress them later forever into the game with Tinkerer's Workshop or something like that, so you don't have to lose out on the extra jumps. One thing I noticed in, in like the items things, like well, there's an extra slot for something, 
Um, not necessarily for the stuff. You, well, they kind of for the stuff you can put on. Like you know how now you got the two slots where you can have one for like a hat and another one just That's the for die like, slot. Oh look, okay, the die slot. Okay, I noticed that there was one. I didn't. I couldn't really. Yeah. Um, see what the the third one was. So yeah, I just that noticed third one, next which is, I believe is teal colored. You put your dies in there, and that will color the um, adjacent piece of clothing. Okay. It's uh, it's actually a pretty good system as well, uh, for doing it. But the the only thing I don't like about that system is it seems that you can put in the color, and then you can take it off again. So you're going to end up with loads and loads and loads and loads of colors but I mean really it should be a case of you have to replace the color each time you dye it I don't think you should get to keep the color when changing it because that's not really it should be I mean I know the game's not supposed to be realistic but certain little things like that kind of bug me it should color the clothing permanently and then you have to color over it but you don't have to which I find it a little silly. Uh, I can well, see. Well, yeah, because like you know, you make a gold armor set, you can't just take the gold off and build it, build something else with it. Exactly, but um, I, I mean, yeah, I can see people having a chest with like God knows how many stacks of die. Oh, stacks! I, I didn't even notice. I've been following this so closely, obviously, but I only just noticed this earlier today. Stacks of items, um, like potions and stuff like that are still the same, 30 is max, but for blocks, I don't actually know. Uh, at one point they had a stack of like 700, so I am assuming the cutoff is now 999, could be more, but presumably yeah, 999, so no more of this constantly having like 100 blocks of dirt that you have to end up throwing away, oh no it was like 250. That annoyed the hell out of me. Blah, 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 blah. One, two, three, four. Hey, we've got four actual viewers. I thought it was five actual viewers. Let me check. Well, right. in the thing, we've got... One, two, us, three, and then four. Scoob. We've got five. There's Timmy. You also have one. yet. Mosco. Okay, yeah, there's the next one that just came in there. Yeah, we're still going to need... A bit more than that. At least, at least five more. Yeah, if you, dude, it, anyone that you know who, even if they already have Terraria, they can at least then give it to a friend if they win it. But anyone you know, just throw it out there, and if we can get enough people in, we'll do a giveaway. We've got a few codes to give away, and we might give another. Uh, eh, can't talk. Give away another game as well at the same time. Uh, uh, just, just a little uh, explanatory uh, thing here for future references with our giveaways and whatnot. Um, we've got five of our podcasters in the chat here with us, uh, which don't really count for us, for the viewers. So whatever number you see there, minus five, and you've got the actual number of actual um brought in viewers rather than the casters. Yeah, I'm going to make this a little bit clearer for them as well. Right now, I'm actually going to give Scoob a uh, op status. Scoob, there we go. if you fuck about, I will kill you because I know what you're like, but I trust you not to. So, welcome to the ops. Hey. You are now a moderator. I have a feeling I'm going to regret that later. Um, and time out all the people. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, what was it about? Oh, we got a question. A timid... 21. Does anyone know any free or cheap OS that have Terraria works on? What, uh, what do you mean? Uh, a free operating system that you can... It doesn't work on Linux. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, currently not out for Linux and it's not out on Mac OS X yet. However, they have confirmed they are working on a Mac OS X version. There is a uh, uh, Terraria yeah. port yeah. to Android, which I thought was pretty neat. Yeah, iOS has it, but that is not um, real there logic. There Timmy says he's on Linux, it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. The, the, talking about possibly porting to Linux later, at the moment they're only working um, on Mac OS X Apparently version. you can get it to play on Linux. Is it going to say Wine? Probably. Yeah, if it's Wine... I, 
Honestly, Timmit21, if you want to play Terraria, even if it says that it will work with Wine, it won't work well, I can guarantee you that. Just it's dual boot Windows. Game. Dual boot Windows. Uh, if you want to play games, Windows is the way to go and have Linux for everything else. It is unfortunate because Linux is a brilliant operating system. wonder if it would work in Sandboxy on Linux. No, San Sandboxy is... Nah. I mean, you could uh, make kind of a virtual machine and put Sandboxy on that, but Sandboxy itself is not a VM, so mm -hmm. it doesn't work that way. Uh, what Sandboxy does is creates a kind of parent process for other processes that you can put into it. So, for example, if you, find, you downloaded a file from somewhere that you're not too sure about, you want to know if it's got a virus in it, you can open it in a sandboxed um, process, and then it can't infect anything else. It's contained, so you can open so it's a virus like a and it's trapped. Just like a virtual machine, really. It's not really opening on your computer. It's just opening on this like virtual drive type thing. Sort of, yeah. It's sort of like a very miniaturized virtual machine simulation. An actual virtual machine will be installed to a part of your hard drive in a very specific way and it will boot as an actual operating system whereas Sandboxy yeah, yeah, does yeah. it in a watered down way um, so that you used can run several things at once. You used to have a virtual machine on a Mac so I could uh, run um, uh, Windows programs on it. Yeah, but um, that, that, there's a thing you could do to me. Um, VMware, I believe it's called, is a Linux virtual machine software where you can actually where you can actually do make a virtual machine of Windows, you could run Terraria and that, and actually have it on another window that you can just switch to. Uh, not another window, another desktop even. So if you're using something like Compiz, Compiz Fusion, Barrel kind of stuff, you can just rotate your cube or go to the next uh, desktop, and you'll actually have Windows full screen there, and it's like you're in a Windows computer. And then switch back there to Linux if you want. There is one called Sun something that, that I had on mine. I I freaking can't remember what it was. No idea. But, um, yeah, VMware but would, is one of the best ones for It just works real good on Mac. That's all I was trying to uh, um, think of it for. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't remember what I was saying. Oh, yeah. Uh, the iOS version of Terraria is not by Relogic, which are obviously uh, Redigit and Senex and them who are doing the PC version, it is by 505 Games who did the console version. So the content is not the same as the PC. So personally for me, I already gets a bit of a strike on it. I've seen the console version, the content to me personally is not... It, it's not fitting to the Terraria world. They've added a lot in there that shouldn't be there for the theme that it is. However, I'm probably going to buy it anyway, just because it's so cheap, like all iOS apps. But it's actually a lot more expensive than the standard of 69 pence. I believe uh, it's like £2.50, something like that. Or, the Terraria on uh, 360 isn't that bad. But it's still, uh, what I'm saying is the content is not the same as the PC. It's very different, and they've added stuff that, for, in my personal opinion, is not fitting to the Terraria world. Mm -hmm. the, the control system that they've put in there um, for the console version, yes, it works. It works well. Um, I didn't yeah. expect them to be able to make the control so good, so props to them. They are definitely a good development team. I just I don't feel that they should have added certain things in there that they have. Um, the iOS version is, is very similar, and it's obviously, since it's touchscreen, it's got a whole new control system, but from what I've seen, it seems to work well enough, although it's a bit fiddly, takes a while to get used to. Uh, I have heard that it's very difficult to fight bosses with such a control system, though. Oh, it would be with a touchscreen, because you'd yeah. have to be constantly t touching, but I'd be, about the controlling part would definitely be 100% better with the touchscreen than it is on the con like the 360 version. Like, it's kind of, you know, wonky, because it's, it's set up on the uh, um, joysticks, right? Yeah. For your your controlling where, where you got this block, and you got to put this, like, block wherever you want to mine your whatever else, and... It's, it's a little wonky. 
def- the touch screen would definitely be better than that. More control. Yeah, that, it won't be very accurate for that. I'm, I'm, hmm. From what I can tell, I don't think you can just tap up and have an, uh, like an arrow from your bottom arrow shoot at where you're tapping. But if you can, then awesome. That'd be that really would be cool. cool, yeah. Um, what I would love to see at some point when it comes out a bit further, the modding community with um, Leap Motion. Does anyone know about Leap Motion? It's not really gaming specific, yeah. but you know of Leap Motion? Yeah. Anyone else? Not really, no. Well, what do you know of the Leap Motion Joshi Boy? It's a gesture control. It's the method of gesture control input. By how does Not, it work? Uh, uses infrared. Yeah, but I like, like I mean, how do you control it? What do you use to gesture it? Um, preferably your sexual organs, but your hands work too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Probably every person who has one already will probably, the first thing they'll do is see if it detects that cock. I kind of want to try that now. Um, I can confirm, I can confirm for you that it would work. <laughs> no, I haven't taken my cock to a leap motion, but it would work because if you even have your hand closed and just put up, it just detects your body. Um, we have one upstairs, yeah. we do have a leap motion in the house. They are... Basically, you swipe your hand in front of it, and it detects your hand. It can yeah, uh, detect multiple touches. What I've seen, it's not very accurate. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. Uh, well, it, it can be accurate to a degree, but it's not easy to get used to. If you can get used to it well enough and learn to control it properly, it can be quite accurate, but it's still quite difficult. And the time when it gets more inaccurate is when you've got both hands at the same time. If you're using both hands to do stuff, then it can sometimes fuck up a bit but they're constantly updating it's getting better and the cool thing about that is once developer game developers start implementing that into their software you're going to be able to do some pretty cool stuff um, just imagine yeah. sitting um, if I put that with oculus rift imagine uh, that would be uh, oculus I'm- I think the connect would still be more better option with the Oculus, but yeah, I can see where you're going with that. Yeah, imagine you're just sat in, uh, playing Hawken, you're sat in your big walker bot, you look to the side, there's a stick to put up the speed or some boost or something like that, start charging your weapons, and with the leap motion you just stick your hand out, grab hold of that stick and push it up to max. Imagine the feeling of that. It's just, oh, that would be so amazing. Yeah. I, 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 I want that, and I, I want it now. I'm just I, 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 I just want the Oculus. I would play that with the controller or keyboard or whatever the fuck. It would be Oculus wonderful to have. We've got some uh, users in our chat asking how much longer we're going to be with yeah, this Yeah, I just typed uh, in. Podcast. Probably not going to be too much longer hopefully we're going we get on some two hours users. right now two hours already holy shit yeah it's a quarter or ten to four we started at like 150 something oh crap 9 a.m my time god i need sleep oh well i'm not gonna get any but um yeah come on guys get some more people in here because i've i've been dying to give away these codes i've been sat here for a while and without enough people to actually do a raffle. I can't really give them away. I want it to be fair. Um, maybe not. Oh, we just lost one. Somebody left. They don't like us. Ugh. That kind of sucks. We do have five. <laughs> We've got four now. One just left. I mean, with only five users, we can only really give away one, and that well, just yeah. feels unfair. At least we can do a giveaway. Yeah, I don't want to give away just one because it's unfair to all the other users, and uh, I want at least another five users, then we can give away, like, a few codes rather than just one. Oh, uh, this sucks. Anyway, 
Um, what else is new? Uh, I'm trying to think if we've seen anything more. I mean, I will have done. It's just a brain fart. There's so many new updates. It's insane. Uh, it's going back down to nine, so four. Someone keeps coming in and leaving. I don't know. Oh well. But, um. Space biome is not a thing, and it is so far not to be a thing. At least not in this update. It will not be there, which is unfortunate. If everyone bugs uh, Redigit enough over the next year, then maybe we'll get it in two years. And maybe he'll finish it in three years instead of the, like, one and a half. Well, currently what is, is he's going to continue updating. There's going to be more updates. It's the scale of which we do not know, so these might just be small little patches. Or, you never know, he might do the same thing again, he might work for another year, do a massive, massive load of content. We don't know. Oh yeah, he did mention that there'll probably be a Halloween update. He wants to do one, he didn't say it's certain to happen, but there may be a Halloween update. And after that, it'll probably be more general updates. And then, he wants to go on to Terraria 2, the sequel which everyone wants to know about and he is not releasing any information apparently he has lots of ideas already for it he's got a lot planned but it is not 100% certain to be happening let's just hope he can do it yeah, Terraria 3D that's what I've been wanting I doubt that one's gonna happen although there oh I can't remember the name of it I will have to look it up and look more into it for the next podcast but there is a game coming out that's like a 3D Terraria or what some people would say Minecraft but it's more Terraria-esque because of the fact that it's more game element to it and it actually looks really nice it's a 3D game like Minecraft that doesn't look like it was built on the fucking Doom engine which I am so happy about it's not amazing graphics obviously because a game like that with so much there in the world it would take a shit ton to run it but it's not bad graphics and it's got quests and the way the NPCs actually um, and, and the AI work in it seems quite uh, very smart um, in the tutorial it tells you to take some blocks and fix a bridge so that this NPC can cross it now you can completely ignore him, not fix the bridge, make your own bridge over somewhere further down away from the broken one and as soon as you hit the other end and make a full bridge for you to get over the AI NPC there actually recognizes that hey this guy's made his own bridge I'm gonna use that and he'll actually go and cross it which I think is pretty cool it um, gives what you a is tutorial this? that isn't completely linear I can't remember the name of it. I'll see if I can find it very quickly right now. But if not, I'll um, have to look into it more for the next podcast. Because that is actually a really amazing looking game. I, I very much want it right now. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to... No, I'll, I'll look into that. Um, later, but it does look pretty damn amazing. <coughs> Wasn't me. I wouldn't burp on live stream. I'm not so rude as that. Uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, anyway, what else is new? I think there must be more, but I'm probably just forgetting. Uh, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, somebody got stabbed when we talked it, about it. We did that last podcast. Three million three days, aside from that, nothing much to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Anyone here play Dota 2? I have. I live-streamed it. It was horrible experience. Never again. <laughs> I used to play a bit of League. I occasionally play Smite. 
Never played Dota 2. Oh, I've just realized that it was actually, um, Ultra is best. Ult oh, Ultra is best in the chat who actually asked anyone here played Dota 2. I thought it was just James asking. Um, yes, I've played Dota 2. I've played it, not a lot of it, only a little bit. I've watched a few tournaments here and there of it, so I do know a fair bit about the game. Personally, not my thing. Um, neither was League of Legends, though, and all similar games, but, I mean, it's it, it's a good game. I think my biggest problem with it, and with all those types of games, is there isn't enough um, different maps. So I get bored too easily. Also, <laughs> I don't like taking the time of learning so many characters with the whole rotor systems they generally have and stuff like that. Um, you get bored of any game real quick. You only play it for a certain amount of time, and then you're on to the next one. Terraria, 1,500 hours. KSP, 600 hours. Uh, Guns de Jour, IG, North American Edition, about 5,000 hours. What are you talking about, Niggy? No, you know what I mean. Rather than the <laughs> games that really interest you. Yeah, well, no, the, the main reason that I now don't like to be tied to a game, I actually hate being tied to a game, so... 1.2 Terraria, I actually let off because, hey, it's a brilliant game, I love it. Same with Kerbal Space Program. But the only reason, like, for example, StarCraft 2. I love StarCraft, I always love StarCraft. The original was amazing, Boob War Expansion, absolutely brilliant. StarCraft 2 is great. The only reason I don't play online is because as soon as I go on, I get my ass beat. I can't do even the um, matchup ones to put you in your league. I'll instantly die, so I know I'm always going to end up in Bronze League. I noticed they changed the Thors. Is there any Thors in StarCraft 2 anymore? Uh, I don't know, I haven't played it in a while. But um, yeah, the reason I won't play that online now is you have to practice a lot. The people in there are so good that you have to put in a lot of time to it and I've got so many games that I don't want to be tied to just one game anymore it's I prefer I, I've I'm very happy now when they actually when a developer comes out with a short game with a good story that is a good game but short like say eight hours long rather than the whole huge amount of hours that you need to put into other games because an eight hour game I can do a couple of uh, sessions and be completed and I've got uh, what I wanted for my money out of that. It's mm -hmm. so much better for me with how many games that I have and need to play. I mean, I've got, let's see, I have 151 games on Steam all installed, but there's so many of those I still haven't played. A, a, a huge I know. amount. I know, eight RPGs. I went through my list even just just the 60 and something. I think there was something like six of them that we haven't played yet. Yeah, I mean, like uh, only six. Company of Heroes. That's just on my list. That's on his list. Um, Company of Heroes. I I've had that for God knows how long, a long time. I never even looked at it until earlier today when. Um, our editor at large, known issues, actually asked us if any of us had it, and I said, "Yeah, yeah, I've got that. I've just never looked at it." Mostly and he told me I'm what is, playing it. and he told me what it is, and I actually, I'm loving it already. I've only played a tiny bit of the tutorial, and I plan to play that. I might be doing live streaming of that with me, known and James. After this podcast, we'll see if we've still got time for it. If not, there'll be a live stream of that tomorrow night. Or uh, maybe don't, afternoon. Don't, don't even invite me, Dick. Oh, you got okay. You can you can join us. Jeez, calm down. Don't get your no, pants. I, I don't. I don't know. It sounds like you don't want me. Well, I I want you, but in a different way. Now, um, anyway, <laughs> less of this sex on the stream. Come on, you know you shouldn't say things like that. You get me, Randy. <sighs> He's doing it to wake me up, Randy. guys. Yeah, Randy, baby. Um, so, I think that's about it. Anyone else got anything new to talk about? Not really. No? No anal sex? No. Let's hurry up and wrap this up before Chess starts whipping things out. Oh, I already whipped it out, baby. 
I guess I'm gonna have to say oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, viewers, Don't about the, least, the uh, giveaway. Recommends a good topic. Let's talk about world economy. <laughs> oh, good lord. Anyway. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to say sorry to the viewers about the giveaway thing. Uh, we just didn't qu get quite enough uh, viewers. Uh, we will be trying to do the giveaway again tomorrow sometime, so stay tuned. Yeah, what I'm gonna know. say is, I mean, generally, when we do the podcast, because they're over there in America, and we've got them in Canada, and places like that. Yes, I said Canada, that was deliberate. Canada. It's Canada, bitches. Anyway, Canada. and I'm over here in England, the time zones are Canada. all fucked up. Oh. So tomorrow, shut up, shut up, uh, Gar, so tomorrow what we're going to try and do is, rather than um, giving away during a podcast, we'll do our general game stream of whatever game we decide to at the time, and we'll do the giveaway Terraria. again, and try and do it earlier. Huh? What? Uh, we, we, I, think, I think what it I think what it might end up being is the, the most viewers we ever got when we were playing was when we were playing uh, StarCraft 2. So it will likely end up being in a StarCraft 2 game. Possibly. I mean, it, it depends. We'll see what happens. But basically, we're going to do some streaming tomorrow, and, and we'll do it earlier. Hopefully, more people will come in. So if you haven't already, follow us so you know when we go live next, and you're good be in a chance to win a it's copy of Terraria. Starcraft, Wings of Liberty. Oh, you, you like Starcraft? Well, yes, we'll be playing Starcraft 2 Wings of Liberty. Yes. So, uh, tell your friends, you know, get them to come in, make sure they register and uh, with Twitch and whatnot, so we can actually see that, that they're converse with them, you yeah, know, the be able only to get way, some information. Yeah, the only way um, you can be in for a chance to win is you have to be logged in, because it's going to be through the bot whole raffle system so the bot chooses so you have to be logged in to enter uh, yeah so get as many of your friends non knowing not uh, how, how, uh, your friends not your friends spam us on your facebook spam us and anything you got twitter whatever else yeah just let everyone know about it and uh hopefully we can get a good group of nice people together and actually finally get rid of these codes because uh, they've been sitting here for ages. A group of nice people. That's and we've been saying that we're going to do a giveaway now for months. So uh, we kind of like to stick to our word when we say we're going to give something away. We just never really had the viewers to do it. Yeah, I'll tell you what, how many do we have in here right now? Just one sec. Mm -hmm. uh, got we got nine viewers minus five, so we got f four. We'd, we'd probably play... Tell you what, no, just because I can. Uh, how do I send? When we play community games. Oh, oh, oh. what do you mean by yeah, I was about community to say, games? I was about to say, what does That's that just mean? a question from the chat. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say to him as well, what's a community game exactly? Do you mean uh, the live, uh, the, the viewers joining us? Play with people? Well, we've talked no. about this before in terms of. Certain times, certain games, yes, we will allow viewers into the live stream. Uh, that all Terraria, depends on time. No. Ter yeah, I was about to say, Terraria, Terraria our main game, is that, not allowed. And we had an asshole, so that just kind of wrecked it for everybody. Yeah, but other games like StarCraft 2 and other things like that, possibly, yeah, that way yes. That you guys can get completely reamed. Huh? That way you guys can get completely destroyed. Yeah, if we add anyone to StarCraft 2, they're going to have to be on our team, otherwise they're going to kill us. Uh... Anyway, uh, how do I send people messages in this thing? Um, right. on Hang Twitch? On. Yeah, you yeah, I've got it. I've got look it. on their name yeah. and then you... Yeah, I've got it. I've got it. Alright. Yeah. Mm. You, you do. Oh, actually, apparently I can't. Why not? Oh, there we go. There we go. Click on their name so and go we've message. Got, yeah. we got... Yeah... Just give me one second. Oh, one of them left, so we've, oh, we've only got four people now. That sucks. But, just as a consolation, since we're not giving away Terraria right now, I'm going to throw you each a code of a, another random game. So let's see what we've got. I'm just finding my folder with all the codes in. I've lost it. Well done, me. See it somewhere. There it is. 
So for your thanks of uh, joining us and trying to uh, get some viewers in here, we're going to uh, give you a little a little something. Just uh, our appreciation of you coming to watch our podcast live. And it's secret of the secret of my mana, or no. You're welcome for some reason. Huh? Yes, you're welcome. I'm sure they They're saying thanks in the chat. More than welcome. We've got loads of codes to give away, so I'm just going to throw these out right now. One, two, three, and four. And you should all get a message within the next few seconds. Team at 21. Someone else here. I didn't see the... Uh, uh, Ultra is best. One shot kill. And Good. here's the last one. M. Sungo. There you go. Did the other dude come back? No, he didn't. That's unfortunate. Who's uh, <laughs> M -G who's M U M S U G O? Is that any one of us? Nah, nah. M Sungo is a friend of uh, Scoob's, I believe. Ah. Wait, what? M Sungo is that a friend of yours? Uh, no. Oh, I thought it was okay. Well, yes, is James, is that your mother? Probably, no. <laughs> probably. <laughs> no, my so, mom's yeah, off on a four-wheeler uh, trip. Yeah, it's. Uh, I've just sent it all to uh, to each of you. You got one in your message inbox here on Twitch. So there you go. And I better mark those off of my list as being given out now. And if you've already got the game, just throw it to a friend or sub it. Or or sell it. Yeah, you, there's, there's it says thing. it's duplicated. The one dude said. Duplicated? What the? Are the codes working for you other guys? There should be no reason for it not to work. Did you throw one code to two people? No, I shouldn't have. I'm gonna throw him another one right now. So, congratulations, Ultra Best. You're getting two. Well, Good really job. Matter. We've got loads. Which game was it? It's that one. There we go. So tell your friends, we do give away things. <laughs> Occasionally. I really want to give Might away not have been the game that you wanted to get, but well, we gave you something. It's consolation for now. You just now. have to put up with us. You just have to put up with our, us for like three hours. That's one thing I'd like to say. I'd like to thank all the viewers for coming in here and for their input in the in the chat and the conversation that we've been having. Uh, very much appreciate that. Yeah, I've got to say this has probably been the most chatter we've had in the chat, and I actually like the chat uh, in the chat. It's good yeah. to have chat. I like the chat in the chat. Yeah, I like the chatter in the chat. Yeah. It's good to have chat because I like chatting, and the chatting is good. And yeah. I, th I think you forgot to say <laughs> chat. Oh, did I? Sorry, I meant to say chat. Better? Oh, fuck's sake. One, <laughs> shot, one shot kill said he got a duplicate code as uh, well, but it's following the stream now. I gave you guys codes to uh, the on the range, like Precipice of Darkness for you, right? Did your codes work? To what, what? Precipice of Darkness 3 on the rain slick. Precipice of Darkness 3? Yeah, I gave you a code. I gave um, Josh a code. Is that code. that rain jacket one? Rain jacket? Uh, I don't know. It's the uh, RPG 2D game, kind of like Pokemon look style, but a bit more cool. What was it called again, sorry? On the rain slick. On the rain slick. Yeah, Penny Arcade's on the rain so, slick. So the code yeah. worked for you? Yeah. Why aren't these codes working? Because like, the, the dudes over at Penny Arcade gave me like fuck knows how many. I've got like 60 something here. So yours worked. Um, I used one of the codes and it worked fine. Yeah. And nobody's had any of these I'll be codes. Damned if he gives me any. <laughs> I'm gonna. Here, let, 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 let me test one. Yeah, I'll for, oh, can you even do that since you've already got the game? Try it. 
Ah, uh, which, I haven't given one to Scoob. Uh, Precipice of Darkness 3, I already gave you one, but Scoob, you don't have it, do you? I don't you? think you do. No, I don't. Well, I've got you mapped down here as having one. But, um, Scoob, you try putting that code in, tell me if it works. Wait, where am I putting this in? It's uh, Steam. Redeem Steam. it as a Steam game. Alright. One sec, I'm, I signed out of Steam because I didn't know what we were doing. And uh, duplicate proctor. I was calling it a duplicate as well. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, and no, I don't have that game. So apparently, all of these are codes. Are you sure are he didn't just products. give you like a code that he gave to like 60 people? Well, if he did, that's a, being a bit of a douche. But no, because like all the other codes, they worked fine. I got it, James did. I gave you one, you obviously didn't use it. Um, no one got one. I gave no. a couple to some other guys a while ago and it worked for them. So I'm guessing um, that they've decided to stop doing the codes for this game since the newer one's out. No, it, uh, it says duplicate. Yeah, I'm going to try and redeem one myself even though I've already got the game, see what it says for me. But that kind of sucks if they've done that and haven't even told me that they're Maybe, maybe it. it seems that it's been so long they've given the codes out again not knowing. No, because the way they generally do it is they have code generator, they copy and paste the codes, give it to the person, and then it, the, the uh, program is set so that it won't regenerate them. Product already on, the same account already owns this product, uh, so I can't even attempt to do it. And now it's telling me I'm about to install it. I've already got installed, you fucking retard. Piss off, Steam. Can I not well. redeem it to, as a gift pass to send someone? Oh, well, sorry about that, guys. I'm gonna... I'll, I'll get onto them and see if I can get some replacement codes for that. Because that really does suck. But, um... Otherwise, we've got Terraria codes, which will definitely work. We've had that confirmed for sure. So, two days. Less than two days, I think. Fuck shit. At, at, at this point, it's... Oh, that's, uh, <coughs> two and a half days. Yeah, two days. It's just over two days till Terraria 1.2. And you as know soon what? as the update goes live, I will be live streaming it. You know what time it goes live? No, not as yet, but I'll find out before it's out. Don't worry about that. Because as soon as it's out, I am going to be on here live streaming it. And I don't care where the fuck you guys are. If you're in school, if James is working or sleeping, if Scoob's masturbating. I don't care. I'm going to be here streaming it without you guys or with you guys. It, it, no. It's happening. As soon as that update is downloaded onto my system, I'm streaming it. And I'm probably going to stream for the entire fucking day. It's gonna be so fun. Oh my god, I'm gonna jizz all over my computer screen just thinking about it. Oh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, I forgot we're still live streaming. No, um, send one to Sexy Kitten there on Steam. I'll try it through hers. Uh, oh! Good idea. Here, take this one. Ah! Uh, wasn't me. What's not? It was your mother. And when I say your mother, I mean your mother. You. Yes, you, Game. viewer. Your mother. Every viewer that's viewing, yours. Uh huh. I'm such Active a Active the product on Steam or redeem a Steam wallet code? Uh, activate product on Steam. Activation successful. Oh, so the codes do work. Oh, that one works at least. Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to send you all codes again. So we know that this block here works. So let me just separate that out. There we go, because I've got a huge list of codes here. So here, guys, try these ones. Um, just... One sec. Uh, 
I'm gonna have to refresh the page right now, so I've just lost the chat, but for some reason I can't get the user list up now. There we go. Uh, you must be used to get, not being able to get things up. Uh, it's working, it's downloading, and pause it so it doesn't lag us out. Awesome sauce. So, we got working cords. Let's see if it'll work for these guys. M. Sungo, your code has been sent. Can't send message without subject. Your code hasn't been sent. Your code will be sent in just a second. <laughs> I'm not bothering to put in a subject now. I can't be R, so it just says lol. Right, code for you. One short kill. There's another code. And ultra is best. There you go, guys. Try those codes. Hopefully, those ones will work. The other guys that I sent codes to left, which is unfortunate. But, oh, well. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, I guess it actually was only one of the guy, wasn't it? So, whoever it was that I gave a code to as well, he's left. It was one shot kill that had the duplicate, and... Yay! Excellent. So, we got some working cards, at least. Ultra Best? Ultra Les Best? Uh, or whatever his name is? Precipice of Darkness. Oh, well, then just <laughs> give away the code to a friend. It's all gravy. What you said you didn't what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. Oh well, give it away to a friend. Yeah, did, did. <laughs> Good job. Well, he did good. It's well, we got plenty of cards, so it's all gravy. Just throw it to a friend or whatever, it's all good. Yeah, we still got shit tons to give away. Ugh. We'll eventually get rid of the codes. Anyway, that is the end of the podcast. Good, good riddance, all of you. Thank you to our viewers yet again for joining us and uh, actually participating in the chat. Yeah, much uh, appreciated it and for throwing the stream out to friends and stuff. Really cool. Awesome chat. Look we very rarely get people actually responding to us, which... Look for us tomorrow. Uh, we will be on tomorrow sometime throughout the day to try to do the Terraria giveaway again. Yes, uh, and it will definitely be earlier. Like, at GMT plus zero, so my time, it will probably be around anywhere between 6, 10 p.m., so, so uh, uh, Eastern time would be like one to in between one to uh, five. You said uh, six, to, six 10. to ten, right? Yeah, between six and ten p.m. So it would be between one to five. Awesome. Uh, standard sauce. Eastern Standard Time. When people are actually awake, wow! We're, we're going to do a daytime stream. It's amazing. Um, also, if that's you... what I always said we should have done when we first started. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, I know. By, by the way, by tomorrow, do you mean? Like, well, today, to... yes, it's today because it's no, past yeah. twelve. So today we're gonna do a stream for that. Uh, <laughs> and if you s stay tuned, we're probably gonna be doing a stream within the next half hour of Company of Heroes. Yeah. So if you like real time strategy type games and stuff like that, feel free to come and watch that and I might do something else after who knows. Uh thanks yeah, so again if you for can, watching. Uh, put up with us for that long. Feel free to stay around. Yeah. And um Steam oh sh oh wow. Hang on.
I just realized something on the actual stream that I should have noticed ages ago. Where is... That's the template. No, that's not the template. What? Can't find the template, guys. Look, something screwed up because none of the links are actually showing up there. Oh, oh yeah. fuck, there it is. Here. <laughs> the links are going to appear in a second. Eventually. Links. Oh my god. There we go. There. Links to all the different places you can find us. Feel free to follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, I don't know if Google Plus is on that list. Steam Community. Uh, yes, yeah, Steam Community Group is a good place to join us. If you always logged into Steam, then whenever we go live, an announcement will pop up in the bottom corner and let you know. And, of course, YouTube. Well, yeah, YouTube. Um, all videos from the stream go up on YouTube, so if you ever miss a stream, you can watch it there. Or you can watch it here. It's better to watch it on YouTube, though. Um, that way we can keep track of the analytics better. And we know what content is actually being watched, what to get rid of, and what to keep. And for those of those viewers that aren't with us live right now, um, check with check in on this uh, channel from time to time on the Twitch channel to uh, see when we'll be doing our next broadcast, or or live streams. Yeah, podcasts will be once every two weeks, generally on a Saturday, sometimes Friday and Sunday, depending on. Uh, Special one can occasions. Get everyone together. Yeah, some people. Sometimes we're busy. This was, this was a special occasion. Yeah, we did this one last extra week. one was because of the Terraria one point two update coming out. We felt we should have a little chat, which turned into a big chat. But. Oh, also, I'm putting a date on. I'm putting a rough date on this. Um, probably starting in December sometime, I'll be running these suckers through a D&D campaign. Yeah. So, if any of you guys are interested in tabletop games, stop by in like a month. Yeah. I need to write it. Eventually, we're going to be playing d and I'm kind of dreading it, especially since <laughs> I've apparently picked the most complicated character to control and run, but yeah. It should be fun. I'm going to be a Jigglypuff. So stay tuned for more content. We will be back. We are back now. Yes, full time. Indeed is the best. Indeed. And we we will be doing loads and loads more of different content um, um, in the coming weeks. Yes. Thank you all for watching. I've been your host, Te Emo Girl. I have been your co-host, James Bond, sixty-nine twenty-six. And yeah. <laughs> and the other one. I was gonna star Mr. Scoober. And of course uh -huh. we we've had our uh, editor at large known issues, which I don't think is currently with us. No, any he had to leave. So we'll say goodbye for him. And yeah, we've had that guy, the one there. Yeah, that one. Do 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 Yeah, the one that, who, whose helmet looks like it has a vagina on it. I really <laughs> need to get you to change that. <laughs> Yeah, Alright, Twitchies. The stream. That's what I see. So Alright, Twitchies, thanks again for viewing. This has been your podcast for the 28th of September, 2013. We bid you goodbye. 29th, 28th, same thing. What? It's so confusing me when we're trying to leave. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and enjoy the sexy anime girls. Go masturbate. Goodbye, viewers. See you again soon.